I'm not. You don't even do that? No. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the workshop for the Mayor and Alderman, uh, Board of Mayor and Alderman, May 31st, 2018. Uh, we'll start off with the prayer by Alderman Cole, the Pledge of Allegiance with Alderman Brown. Everybody needs to look over the minutes for May 1st, 2018 regular meeting. Skipping down the old business. It's uh, <clears throat> second reading ordinance 2018-12, an ordinance to amend the physical year 2017-2018 senior citizens fund budget. This is second reading. We had this last month. Any questions? Number four, first reading. <clears throat> ordinance 2018-13, an ordinance of the city of Laverne, Tennessee, adopting an annual budget and tax rate for the physical year beginning January 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Any, any question on the ordinance? Number five, resolution 2018-10, a resolution of support and commitment to fund a safe room. Any discussion on the safe room? <coughs> We're moving right along then. We're down to... Um, <coughs> Motion to approve or reject the settlement offer for the Stacy Thompson lawsuit. Uh, it will be a, a, a consecutive meeting, a session held before Tuesday's meeting, and this will be at a meeting only. Puts us down the consent agenda. That'd be number seven. Motion to approve or reject city bids. Number one, a uh, plastic vest for the police department. Um, there you go. You know what tomorrow is, Chief? Right. Yeah. It is National Power Ring Day. Is it really? Yeah. I had to remember that. It's one. National Power Ring Day. You know what Saturday is? Two days after the day. <laughs> Saturday is the day my mother was born. She'd be 88 if she was uh, 86 if she was still here, but that's okay. She can celebrate that. We had the uh, bids for our new vest contract, and we're doing it for a year with two additional years. Uh, we had three that actually bid, <clears throat> went through them. Uh, GT distributors. Uh, bid exactly what we had requested, and they were the low number on that at 815.58 each. And we do apply for and utilize the Bureau of Justice Administration vest grant, which gives us half back. So it doesn't cost us that full amount, it cost us $407 and some odd cents. Uh, Summit uniforms also bid. Uh, but that same vest was 1075 They had one at 693 but it's not what we asked for. And then we had Ganoval, uh, who is a, uh, another company who produces vests in Knoxville, but the vests that they bid were not the vest that we asked for. So we're recommended and requesting uh, to take the GT distributors bid. If anybody's got any questions. Any questions for the vest for Chief Walker while he's on up at the uh, microphone? <clears throat> Thank you. Personal Thank you. protection equipment for accessories for the fire department. I know this, that's Ricky. <clears throat> the first one is uh, for our personal protective equipment. Uh, most of that, what that is, is uh, fire gear, coats, helmets, stuff of that nature. Uh, there's only one bid came in for it. But as you can see, there's only two vendors in the state of Tennessee for uh, the Inatech gear. Uh, 
and one of them is actually an East Tennessee dealer. They usually do put a bid in though. Uh, that's, they do compete, to, but they knew about it. Uh, Chief Clark actually got a text message from them. They knew about the bid. They elected not to bid against uh, Southeast, so we're just asking that Southeast Fire uh, get the PPE award on that since they're the only two in the state. Any questions on that? You bought equipment like before. Is that a pretty competitive bid? Oh, yes, sir, definitely. It, it's, we even opened it up. We went back, the, the company that we had before for our PPE and our uniforms was Safe Industries, but as you know, they're still in Smyrna, but they don't have a storefront anymore. They basically kind of semi shut down as far as being a, a storefront type business. It's more of just like a little storage warehouse there now. So we, we've, even though we've tried to get away from that at this point, we, I even called Karen and asked her if she would put a bid in on a competitive uh, globe gear, uh, competitive in, in the, because that's what we use now. And uh, she said she was going to put in a bid and she didn't put a bid in. So, so actually three people were contacted. Uh, so that's what we got. Thank you, Ricky. Yes, sir. When the next one, Jewel, go ahead. What equipment was that again, Chief? Uh, it's the uh, coats, helmets, suspenders, the boot, year, fire boots. It's, the it's all the right. It's all the protective equipment, the protective okay. gear. Since I went to the class, I have to. Yeah. Use it. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Ricky. The next one, Jewel, too. It's uh, fire uniform and accessories. Yes. Chris was good enough to go in and break this one down for me while I was making some runs to some of these places and checking some other things out. Uh, there's actually, look through, that should be, there you go, a spreadsheet. If you look through that spreadsheet, you'll see that uh, in marked in red, uh, the ones marked in black obviously are the ones that they beat the price on each thing. But if you look at the ones that are highlighted on each one, uh, it's got an explanation out to the side of it. Uh, the only two bids that we got back was CMS uniforms and Summit uniforms, both out of Nashville. They're about two blocks away from one another. Uh, other companies were notified. Uh, 511 actually has a new store in uh, Nashville now that they just opened up. It has been opened up long enough, though, for them to be uh, able to bid. And then I think they've opened another one up in Franklin. Uh, they were aware of the bid as well and elected not to bid on it. However, as you can see through that, uh, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of things from Summit that just didn't uh, where they should have done exceptions in the bid packet they did not. Uh, Chris made a call over to them. Uh, I was concerned because CMS uniforms actually showed that their embroidery and their their patch sewing was part of their bid their number that was on their bid. When you looked over on Summits, however, it didn't say anything. It was just the shirt or the pants or the jacket, it didn't say anything about embroidery or patches. So Chris made a call down and lo and behold, well, those are extra. So when you start adding those things up, you start getting into uh, uniforms that are obviously gonna be higher or equal in price. Nonetheless, to me, that's a little deceiving. And uh, the police department already has, has gotten theirs out and they're using CMS as well. Uh, even though CMS is just slightly higher, uh, we would recommend that we go with CMS so that we keep it uniformed with, with the police department and with our needs. They, they were able to provide everything that we had asked for. We've also fit tested and wore uh, multiple uniforms from both of these vendors and another vendor. And uh, the Blower is what we wanted to go to. Uh, and they have all those things. Everything that we've asked for, they've been able to provide at one place. So a quick question, if if they said no bid, they just didn't want to try to beat the price or they didn't just Well, it, it, like up at the top there, it says first tactical belt. We had asked for a first tactical belt, but if they wanted to do a, a comparison, they are not a first tactical, uh, they, they're not able to sell first tactical equipment at their store. Okay. But they could have substituted a 511 belt there, but they didn't even do that. They just put no bid, so I guess that means that we couldn't get a belt there at all. Obviously, we'd have to, you know, do something outside of the bid in order to get the belt. Uh, I'm not really sure why they're 
proposal was put together the way that it was because we were very, very specific uh, in what we put out. And then for the items that CMS did not bid on as well, uh, Peggy Yard just have to go out to get those? The only thing that they did not bid on, uh, if, you, if you look up at the top where those cornerstones are, it wasn't the fact that CMS didn't bid on them. We never asked for that item to begin with in our bid. Uh, those cornerstone navy and white shirts there, those weren't in our bid spec packet. It's like a t-shirt with a collar. Uh, we, it wasn't even something we bid, but it was on their bid specs. Cheap. So. And the shoes as well? Uh, the only other thing on there was the third good uh, high gloss. They have others. Why they didn't put their others on there, I do not know that. Questions? Thank you, Ricky. I think that, I think that does you on consent agenda. Thank you. Number four, state contract purchase vehicle for street department. Good afternoon, Mayor and Alderman. Uh, if you remember back in during the budget hearings, we had asked for a new transport van <laughs> for the street department to carry the inmates. Um, in that time, I think AC was buying a bus for the seniors, so we're going to take over the old one. And instead of buying that, we're going to move our three-quarter ton truck up to pull the gooseneck trailer and stuff with, and then we're just going to buy a pickup truck to replace it. And I think it was under budget like $29,800 something dollars. Any questions? Thank you, Garland. Number five, purchase sewer flow meter and accessories. Mayor Alderman, good afternoon. Uh, the sewer department, we're requesting the purchase of two sewer flow meters. Uh, if you recall back during the budget retreat when we was discussing the capital needs, we recommend additional flow monitoring need to be, needing to be done in the northern Clayton Estates segments one and two interceptors. Uh, we've reached out to Mr. Bill Miller with United uh, Technologies who performed that work for us in the past in the Hollandale drainage basin. Uh, he quoted us roughly about $2,000 a month to do the flow monitoring. And when we received three quotes, started to do the math, uh, the cheapest quote, which seems to be the unit of choice uh, from everyone I spoke with, come back at $20,286. Uh, I thank staff. Uh, Mr. Brown, uh, Mr. Leach, as well as Neil Hall thinks that it would be a great choice to, for us to go ahead and purchase these flow meters in-house, do our own flow monitoring, then we'll be able to use them down the road and continue to save money for the city. Uh, we can put them in other sub-basins once we finish that interceptor, locate I&I, &I, make repairs. Obviously, there'll be less rainfall going to Metro, best way I can put it. Uh, so multiple, multiple advantages for us if we make this purchase. It uh, was not a budgeted item, but Ms. Phyllis has, has said that we do have the funds available. So we would like to recommend uh, the purchase of this unit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. B, approved <laughs> donation of the Brinks Armored Vehicle for a uh, truck for the police department. I got my bodyguard with me this Y'all fixed to haul, haul some money? No. Brinks has a program where they donate to law enforcement agencies trucks that they actually take out of service at a certain mileage that they get. They're still good trucks. They're still armored vehicles. Um, but in order for us to do the program, we have to have approval to do it and watch. We don't have to accept one if they offer it if it's not in good condition or what we think is good condition, or there are issues with it. And it may not be, it may be too big for us. They have everything from the van size armored uh, all the way up to the, the big full size Brinks trucks. And Conrad's one that has been involved and talked to them the majority. So he's here to answer any additional questions, but it's, uh, it's a freebie, it doesn't cost us anything. They donate it to the city, but we would have to have approval um, and I don't know, Bruce, how that would have to be worded down the road if we would have to wait and come back again <coughs> or 
Well, I, I think the way we've put it on the agenda, you know, to approve the donation of a truck. Okay. You know, because we never know when one's going to come available. Yeah. You only have a certain amount of time to say, yeah, I want that. Right. So, you know, if, if the board goes ahead and approves the donation, then whenever one is offered, you can go ahead and, and get it. Okay. And then if we need to bring it back to council for ratification later, I think we can do that as well. Okay. And Conrad, too, if you've got any more questions on what we would do with it, it would be totally a, uh, a defensive device. Y'all going to do like the fire did that trailer and put your symbol on it or any identification? I don't know. What's your opinion? We. It would probably be good to put a uh, loudspeaker on it and uh, maybe a set of blue lights so uh, we could use it to get in and out of a hot situation to rescue a downed officer, downed fireman. Um, it was, it's not a full, like the Bearcat, like we've got out back, but it's a lot lighter. It can take uh, rounds from uh, any pistol, most firearms in terms of rifles. Um, it's not a full Bearcat, so it's not like we're getting a $250,000 piece of equipment, but it would serve our needs to go to SWAT mission so we don't take 10 cars. Um, it would enhance our team and our city's capabilities <coughs> in terms of responding to active shooters and basically any incident that we'd have to travel to that we'd want to move into. Okay. Probably not. Not the markings. Because they're usually just, uh, just gray or black. Yes, sir. Aren't they? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, like the dark charcoal, dull gray. Yeah. Similar. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure y'all put the city uh, logo on it and put the lights and like a speaker on it. With a, well, the, the lights wouldn't necessarily be blue lights. They would if you turned them on, <coughs> they'd show blue. But other than that, it wouldn't be very conspicuous and obvious. It'd be more like a, uh, unmarked vehicles, so to speak, in oh, a way, wow. and then a loudspeaker so that we could at least have communications from there to someone who might be <coughs> barricaded inside, etc. That's the reason for that. Thank you. Appreciate y'all coming up. That'd be C, approved additional streets to be paved during the current Fiscal year 2017-2018. Since you got asphalt now, you want to pave some streets? Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, and also, I do have a meeting Monday morning with Rogers Group at looking at some of the roads. Uh, this is something we've added, and we're trying to get paved out of the 17-18 budget. And, you know, we always bring them to you. Um, I've talked with the striping people, and... We've got them their POs and everything, so they're ready to go as soon as we are. Any questions? Who striped Murfreesboro Road? Was it the state or the city? The state. Okay. Now that's all. Everything on Murfreesboro Road is handled by the state. Any questions? Mine is just about doing Old Waldron Road with all the construction traffic going through. I think we talked about that earlier. Uh, I mean, if we hold off, it's like Murfreesboro Road. you got construction going on on it. We're fixing to pave it. I mean, I, we, I know you have that going on on Mason Road. Ingram's involved in paving this year. Uh, you're going to have heavy trucks. Mm -hmm. It's all industrial on that side. Yeah. And then you've got your tractor trailers that go through to co-op on Old Waldron. So, and with I mean, the we'll, new crane dealership. And the crane dealership. But you've got tractor trailers that come through there. They come from Trinidad, Benham, going back to on Nashville Highway to go up and hit Sam Ridley. So just about <coughs> everywhere we're going to pave, with the exception of some in next year's budget, will be around construction. So, I mean, it's, do you wait two years for the construction to be over, a year and a half, and then pave it? Or, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'll go with what you want. but. I, you know, they, I mean, they're going to travel the streets either way it goes. It's like a subdivision. You know, they do 90% of the build out, and then you've got, say, four houses left to build. You're still going to have tractor trailers coming in. You're going to have concrete trucks coming in. You're going to have loads of brick coming in. So, you know, it's just 
how they take care of it, really. It's that sitting and twisting on it. But I would say, unless somebody tells me different, that I think we should go and do it <clears throat> while we get the money. Any other questions? Thank you, Garland. I guess that puts down a day approved of application for a roadblock to be conducted for the Laverne FOP Youth League Club knockout from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday, June 23rd, 2018, with a rain date of Saturday, June 14th, 2018, at the intersection of Mercer Road and Stone River Road. <coughs> Any questions? I think we have approved number of, of, of organizations to do uh, roadblocks. So any questions on that? We'll move on to ELF. Approved change order number one, water treatment plant, capital improvement projects. Jamie. Good evening, Mayor Alderman. Uh, change order number one includes the additional scope of work to replace the existing harmonic correction unit installed in the electrical building at the water treatment plant. This unit filters the power coming in from NES to the main switch gear to assist with power factor improvement and it also protects the VFDs, motors and other electrical or electronic equipment from damage or failure due to distortions in the electrical system harmonics. Um, this a piece of equipment was discovered to be in a fault condition in April. Uh, the, after attempts by the water treatment plant operators to reset and repair the, the device, the original manufacturer came out to the site to evaluate the unit. Uh, due to its age and it no longer being in production or being supported, Eden recommended that it be replaced with an in-kind new unit. Um, the bulk of the cost in this change order is to for the equipment itself, and then it also includes the labor and materials to remove the existing unit, prepare the space in the electrical room, um, install the new unit, and integrate it in with the SCADA system. This change order also reduces the scope of work associated with additive alternate number one in the contract, which was for providing video surveillance at the raw water intake structure. Uh, the city's surveillance contractor is going to pleat complete this portion of the work now instead with assistance from the SCADA integrator due to the way the fiber is routed from the intake through SCADA panels up to the main plant building. Uh, this change order will add $117,406 in zero calendar days to the 2017-18 um, water treatment plant capital improvements project. The contractor has agreed to this change order. He returned the signed cover sheet to me today, so it's not in the packet you guys have in front of you, um, but they have agreed to it, and I will get that to Bruce uh, before the meeting on Tuesday. Um, we recommend this change order. Do you all have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. We're down to E. I see Mr. Hall getting up. He must know he approved change order number one, Lower East Hurricane <coughs> Creek Interceptor Sewer Project. Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. The Lower East Hurricane Creek Interceptor Sewer Project has been under construction now for about two months, and we've discovered some changes that we would like to make on the project that need to be made on the project. Uh, the service lines that have been uncovered so far are six-inch service lines instead of four-inch service lines. The job was bid for all four inch service lines and we've prepared a change order to revise the service lines from four inch to six inch and also we've discovered some concrete curb that needs to be replaced and so we have prepared and uh, CTI and WNO construction have executed change order one it's being presented for your consideration to add forty thousand five hundred and sixty five dollars to the contract amount for a total of one million six hundred twelve thousand four hundred twenty nine dollars. Any question, Mr. Hall? Thank you. Thank We're you. down to G. Is that you too, Mr. Hall? No. Approved change order number two, Hurricane Creek Greenway project. I get to pass on that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Alderman. My name is John Gordon. I'm the engineer for the Greenway Trail Project. Uh, a few months ago, you approved change order one, which was a big adjustment to the uh, 
uh, greenway cost and also had a few days which were extended for the contractor at that time we did a projection to finish and now that the contractor is complete uh, because of the type of this of project that we have and the way that it works through the TDOT funding we're doing a summary change order change order two that closes this out um, so it it matches what was actually spent on the project um, and so we have a change to the the cost and also the days and also an agreement from the uh, contractor uh, to pay a settlement amount so that's what's included in change order two which will close out that project any questions appreciate it this puts it at as far as completion in august well the or, no, the work is done now we still have to do some inspections to make sure that the the last small amount of work that they did is good and we need to have our final tdot inspection but unless we uncover something, then the work is complete. Okay. The Thank August you. date you're looking at is substantial completion. And yeah, it was just substantial. So we still had to have the final walkthrough and several conversations since then. They also had that the additional flood event that happened. So we've had a lot of issues and that's kind of where you've got the extra days and things like that that's in the packet also. So are we hopeful for June? No, we're, we would be probably, I'd say maybe a month, month and a half. You're probably looking in, in July as far as because once we get this approved, we'll have to still do the <coughs> walkthrough probably. Uh, there's a few signage things, but that's no cost. So once we get them paid, uh, I've got or David's ordered some uh, benches, trash cans, a few other things that we need to get installed before we actually have it open. Uh, but as far as with the contractor, we should be done in a couple of weeks with him. That's if weather permitting. Yes. And no more washouts. And it's been very wet, but uh, but now they're they're done with the work as long as we inspect it and approve it. Any more questions? That puts us down to new business number eight, first reading ordinance 2018-14, an ordinance to amend Title Eight, Chapter One, Section Eight Dash uh, One Ten. <coughs> A Laverne Municipal Code regarding the hours of sale of package liquor stores. This, uh, who's who can speak on this behalf? Bruce, I can speak to that one. Uh, recently, the uh, state legislature uh, made some changes to the hours of sale uh, for package liquor stores uh, to where they can now be open on Sundays. Uh, which of course our uh, municipal code did not allow that so these changes uh, the only changes made here are to basically come into compliance with state law uh, to allow liquor stores to operate on Sundays and uh, the different holidays because the holidays change some as well so this just uh, puts us in line with what the state state laws are at, at this time Number nine, first reading ordinance 2018-15, ordinance to amend the Title 12 of the Laverne Municipal Code by adding a new Chapter 13 regarding the Construction Board of Adjustment Appeals. Mayor, a Who's? few months ago, um, <coughs> and I don't remember exactly how long it's been, we discovered that uh, we really did not have any kind of regulations in place for the Construction Board of Adjustment and Appeals. Uh, years ago, there used to be some uh, regulations that was contained inside the uh, building code that we, we used for that. Uh, the last time we adopted the building codes, we did not adopt the appendix that included those regulations. So uh, we wanted to go ahead and, and create uh, some rules and regulations, some guidelines, whatnot, for the construction board. And that's, that's where this ordinance comes from. We've modeled it uh, a lot after uh, some other boards that we've got, like the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, and whatnot. I, I've looked at other cities' codes and municipal codes uh, for their construction boards and kind of put some of that in here. But that, that's, that's what started this process as far as trying to, trying to get caught up on, on some of that. That puts us down to number 10. 
First reading, ordinance 2018-16, ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2017-2018 general fund budget. Mayor, this is um, another year-end adjustment. Uh, you'll see these come through for the next couple of months as we get uh, closer and closer to end our year-end process. But uh, in reviewing some of the departments, uh, we noticed that the fleet department was going to be over budget, and it was mainly due to the um, maintenance on police cars. Uh, it's running um, way over what we budgeted for the year. And then we've had some expense for the uh, THDA grant. Um, that we uh, have incurred in the last few weeks. So we want to go ahead and take care of those at this point with an with amendment. Any questions? Number 11. Jay, I don't know if these microphones are working or not. All right. Number 11, first reading ordinance 2018-17, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2017-2018 parks capital Project fund budget. Again, this is another um, housekeeping issue for the Greenway. Uh, with the recent um, amendment to that project, uh, we had taken care of our portion of the project in an um, amendment in the <clears throat> last couple of months, but uh, we had not covered all of the expense because we do pay all of the expense and then we get reimbursed 80% from the state. So we had to go back and review that and make some changes there to a tune of $300,000. And that should be the last one for the Parks Capital Project. And that covers the Greenway, of course. Any questions? <clears throat> Number 12, a resolution 2018-11, a resolution to write off water department bad debts. And then, this is something we do every year, it looks like. Yes, we do this every year around this time, sometimes a little bit earlier. Um, this is, I think, for these are mainly accounts that have been uh, past due since 2015. Uh, they've been turned over to Fox Collection. We're not getting a lot of uh, response. <coughs> so we want to go ahead and, and take those off of the books at this time. Number 12, number 13, I'm sorry. Resolution 2018 12, a resolution to authorize the mayor execute a uh, amendment to the ground site lease agreement with SBA Tower 4 LLC for the cell tire located at Fire Station 3. Uh, we spoke about this, Ricky. That's the, the tire behind there that's supposedly been abandoned or somebody else is coming in. Yes, sir, and they sent the paperwork and all and it's been given over to Bruce and that's what he's got here for them. right Th this basically just uh, uh, changes the current agreement that we have with them because they are going into an abatement period which would last three years uh, instead of tearing down the tower now they're going to leave it up and still try to to see if any anybody else will locate on that tower uh, but and they'll try that for three years uh, if they do find a tenant for the tower then they'll come back with another amendment and start paying rent again. Uh, but until that point, uh, you know, there, there won't be any rent coming in on this tower uh, for, for three years. Uh, but this, um, this agreement, I mean, this amendment just, just basically puts it in that abatement period. Any questions? Now, now we're working. Somebody flipped the right switch. Say, so, Jerry, I'm right again. Number 14, appoint a remove board committee members. Bruce? Yes, sir. Uh, first one is the Planning Commission. Uh, we had one uh, resignation, which is Susan Ermel. Uh, <coughs> I've been advertising this on Channel 3. We have received one application, uh, which is Dale Holmes. Uh, the mayor makes this appointment, and uh, if we get any other applications uh, by Tuesday, we will add that to, to the list. Second one is uh, the beer board. We have two terms that are currently vacant. Uh, Anthony Honeycutt and Michael Jolly have resigned. Uh, here again, we've been advertising these positions on Channel 3. Uh, so far, only have two applications. Uh, one is a new one that we actually received today uh, from Isabella Williams. 
And then I had one previously on file that we received, I think in February, uh, from Jimmy Faverman. So we have those two current applicants. And then C is just an FYI for the Economic Development Advisory Committee. Uh, the term for Danny Jones will expire at the end of June. Uh, we will contact him to see if he wishes to stay on the committee. Uh, we'll also begin advertising it on Channel 3. Uh, this will not be on the agenda Tuesday night. This is just information only at this time. That's it. That it? I thought we had one more. Well, for the board members, that's all. Okay. I push down to 15, a motion to approve or reject a settlement offer from the Michael Mullins lawsuit. Again, this will be our executive session uh, Tuesday night, meeting only. Push it down to number 16, discuss residential burning permits. Ricky McCormick. that I could hand out to y'all tonight, but everything hasn't come through for us yet. Uh, since we've been moved into the new admin building, we had hoped that that would help a lot uh, with issuing burn permits. And it, and it does during the <coughs> week, obviously, when we have Miss Elaine there, because myself and Chris and Curtis are obviously not always in the building. Uh, we're out and about doing other things. Uh, what we're still running into, though, is that we still have times when it's hard for uh, anyone to get a permit uh, on the weekends. Even though we're doing Monday through Friday still, still hard for people to get a burn permit on Saturday and Sunday. Also hard for people to get them, uh, I guess people's schedules are so staggered in Nashville now, especially trying to keep the traffic down, I guess. Uh, so many people get off later in the afternoon now that we're long gone and the offices are closed up before they even start to get home, to be able to get a burn permit for the following day or for the weekend. So we went to looking at different things that we could do uh, and have been looking for quite a while. Uh, we just recently this week though took, uh, found a software. We currently had a software called I Am Responding and we use it mainly to track personnel and equipment, uh, scheduling and things like that. But there's a new version or a new company that is out now, and it's called Who's Responding. Uh, same type software as with the I Am Responding, but it, I guess it's, uh, I guess, juiced up a little bit more. It has a few more options that you that, that the I Am Responding does not have. Uh, you're able to stream live radio traffic. Uh, that's just one of the options that you can get with that. But the, be the best part of it is is that it has a, f a fire burn permit module with it that can be done uh, by computer. The first time that a person goes into this, it does have to be done either on a smartphone or on a computer when you log in and get your first burn permit. Anytime after that, you could actually use just a regular push button phone. So you wouldn't even have to have a smartphone to do that. So we have found two. Uh, we, we had asked Miss Elaine to kind of poll people as they come through is what they would like to see, what would make it easier, what would make it better for them and for us. And we found that most people don't have computers, believe it or not. There's still a lot of people in Laverne that don't have computers, they don't have smartphones. So we were gonna have to have that function that you'd be able to push a key on, a, on an older phone. This company is actually able to do that. So for those people that don't have those things, they would only have to come in one time, get registered into the system, and then any time after that that they need a permit, they'd be able to use just their regular push button phone in order to apply and then us approve a burn permit for them. So we went ahead, there was no cost involved. We went ahead and did a 45, or in a 45 day trial uh, period for that. Uh, all of the stuff has not come in for it yet. There's a couple of little modules hardware that we have to have for it, but it's pretty much standalone. Uh, it doesn't have to tie into anything to do with uh, with our servers, so there's no breach there of anything that, that could where people could get into our city servers or anything like that. It's 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 cloud based. Uh, so basically, this was just me tonight, just letting you know that we do still have this problem uh, for the public, uh, and it creates 
some issues for us as well because obviously we want to provide the best service that we can for the public. That's what we're there for is to help the public. And we don't feel like we're doing that. Uh, so this is, we're going to move forward this 45 day, 45 day trial and then we'll, we will come back before you let you know how that went. Hopefully it'll go well and uh, the cost of this project is a little bit more than what we currently have because of the burn module being added onto it and of course this other software is just a little bit more robust. So there's a, a slight cost increase in it but I think it's well within our budget of of money that we already have budgeted for the year to be able to do this project if we want to switch from one to the other. But this was basically just an FYI to let y'all know that we are trying to resolve the issue uh, for the people that can't get burn permits when they need them. Uh, it'd just be kind of hard for us to have an admin assistant or somebody stand by to issue burn permits 24 hours a day, seven days out of the week. So, But uh, at any rate, like I said, this was just an FYI. And if y'all have any more questions about that software or anything like that, I will, and in fact, I will just forward the links to that. It's, it's very self-explanatory if you go through. It even has a video with it and everything else so y'all can get a little better, better feel for, for what we're looking at trying to do. So the trial is currently operating? It is up as far as the, the fire side, the more of the I'm responding side, because everything has to be built with all our, of our personnel and our apparatus and all of those things and all, all of our perimeters on that side. And then the burn module, it'll come in and then we'll add it to it. We're not currently doing the burn module yet. Hopefully that'll be starting this coming week. Now we have spoke with a couple of people that have come into the office for the burn permits to ask if they would be our trial people for it. And they were tickled pink. So I'll trial it for you. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully this works. Uh, we have for years and years and years, Chief even will speak to this, Chief before him and Chief before him, we have laid burn permits off on everybody that we possibly can <coughs> to make it better, but it's just an impossible thing. You would have to just have somebody that that is all they do 24 hours a day around the clock. That there's no way to meet everybody's needs uh, other than going automated. And if we go automated and they want to burn permit at 2 o'clock in the morning for 8 o'clock the next morning, they can get up and get on the computer and get one. So, any other questions? Thank you, Ricky. Yes, sir. If we push it down to Mayor and Alderman comments, Alderman Brown? No, thank you. Alderman Cole. Just want to take a moment to thank uh, Tom Broker, uh, Kyle Brown, Ann Smith, uh, Bruce, for all the work that they did to set up the city for success at the recent uh, ICSC recon trip that we went to. So a lot of hard work and it's greatly appreciated. Alderman Jones. Appreciate everybody coming out. Hope the storm ain't too bad. Remind you again, tomorrow is national, I call it donut day. The police calls it powering day. So if you're out and about, pick up a box of donuts and drop it by the police department. I know they appreciate it. And uh, been a long week, long weekend, and uh, hope everybody fares the storm good tonight. I hope it goes around us. I have nothing else. Call this workshop over. <laughs>